What's up guys, I'm Walter Bernasiak and welcome to another 90s edition of Top 5. Kick back, grab some pork butts because today we're counting down the Top 5 best Cartoon Network original shows from the same decade that channel came to prominence. After the great response from you guys on last week's Top 5 Best 90s Nicktoons, I decided to say thank you by putting the power in your hands. This Top 5 is the result of a Twitter poll I put up asking what should be covered next on Top 5. More polls will be going up on there soon, so if you want your voice heard on what I should cover next, make sure you follow me on Twitter at awesome underscore Walter. Amelie du fromage, Amelie du fromage, Amelie du fromage, Amelie du fromage! Ed, Ed and Eddie started in 1999 with its first season and went on in the 2000s to become a pretty popular show. It culminated in a 90-minute TV movie in 2009. The show centers around the three Eds with Eddie as their scheming leader. He often forces his friends to engage in plots to make money off the other local kids so the trio can purchase giant jawbreakers which they are obsessed with. Ed, Ed and Eddie is one of the longest running shows Cartoon Network has ever put out. Creator Danny Antonici originally pitched the show to both Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon. I can't see Ed and Eddie as a Nick show, could you? I just think it's got its own unique tone that would not have fit in over there at the time. The three Eds and how they worked off each other was the foundation of why the show was so successful. It seemed like a basic formula with the smart one, the dumb one, and the leader, but this cartoon made those archetypes really work for it. The longevity of the series is testament to that. Oh. Well, do me, Double D! <laughs> We're waiting! Very well. Um, let's see now. <clears throat> Butter toast. <laughs> it's an important show because in 1999, Cartoon Network had a few very successful shows, but Ed, Ed and Eddie helped bring CN into the new century and became a mainstay. I'm gonna go find one of those jawbreakers. Number four. Cartoon Network owes most of the success of its initial original series content to this show. It was the launching pad for many cartoons that eventually became their own shows, including Courage the Cowardly Dog, codenamed Kids Next Door, and even featured very early versions of characters from Seth MacFarlane's Family Guy. What a Cartoon, later known as the Cartoon Cartoon Show, was very atypical at the time in its approach to showcasing new short animated projects. Every new episode was a Looney Tune length, seven minutes short, that almost always featured a new cartoon from a different creator. This cultivated creativity as there was virtually no interference from the executives at the network and the creators of the shorts had a lot of control over their projects. The What A Cartoon Show sits at the foundation of Cartoon Network and contributed many things to its identity and legacy. Without this showcase for new projects, who knows what Cartoon Network would look like today? Since such a high number of the shorts first shown here became so popular as their own properties, What A Cartoon later changed its format at the tail end of the 90s and into the early 2000s. The original 48 shorts, all broadcast in the 90s, gave creators some real power to put their best shot at an original cartoon on a national stage. Whenever I would see these pop up as a kid, I made sure to pay attention because they were always so different from anything else I watched at the time. The original Courage the Cowardly Dog short, The Chicken from Outer Space, was even nominated for an Oscar, and I remember it vividly. You can find a lot of these shorts online, so I'd encourage you to go check some of these out for yourself. Number three. One, two, three. Yeah. Way there. Man, I'm pretty. Johnny Bravo centers around its titular character and the often hilariously bad situations he ends up in while in pursuit of the opposite sex, who usually reject him in violent ways. Fairly Odd Parents creator Butch Hartman and Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane both worked on this show in its first season, and you can see some of their style present in a few of those episodes. 
Johnny Bravo's Elvis-like voice and personality, mixed with the somewhat absurd nature of the show, created a pretty iconic character that a lot of people still recognize today. There were a lot of moments in the show's early run where it felt like a classic cartoon, and that appeal, in combination with some veiled adult humor thrown in, attracted an awareness from an older audience. Oh, Franny's mine, yep. Lucy Goosey. Lucy Goosey? I challenge you to the King of the Beach competition. Did you say Lucy Goosey? Apparently, there was a 2011 TV movie release called Johnny Bravo Goes to Bollywood that I had no idea existed before recently researching this show. Has anyone seen it? How is it? Johnny Bravo was a staple of 90s and early 2000s Cartoon Network that people still remember. What more can you ask for? Adios, Johnny Bravo. Yeah, whatever. Number two. Powerpuff Girls became a phenomenon in the late 90s and early 2000s. It was the first short on the What A Cartoon Show, then went all the way to its theatrically released movie in 2002 and was just rebooted with a new series last year. Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup are created when Professor Utonium attempts to create the perfect little girl, but accidentally adds Chemical X to the concoction. Thus, the Powerpuff Girls were born! They defend Townsville from supernatural threats such as giant monsters, him, and their nemesis, Mojo Jojo. I loved Powerpuff Girls when it originally aired in the 90s. It wasn't just a show that pandered to little girls. It never felt too cutesy to me or anything like that. It was badass. The Powerpuff Girls had some awesome action and I had a blast watching this show. While the Powerpuff Girls themselves, Professor Utonium, the mayor of Townsville, and Miss Bellum were all really fun characters, the show is just as well known for its great assortment of villains. I know everyone loves Mojo Jojo, myself included, but the villain, him, was scary as hell. He was my favorite adversary for the girls. This is a villain so evil, so sinister, so horribly vile, that even the utterance of his name strikes fear into the hearts of men. The only safe way to refer to this king of darkness is simply him. Also, the Rowdy Rough Boys episode is still burned in my memory. The girls' distinct personalities always shine through and made the episodes fun to watch even when they weren't fighting bad guys. The cultural impact of the show is undeniable and still being felt today. I haven't seen the rebooted series yet. Is it worth a look? Let me know in the comments. Cartoon Network laid the groundwork for what it is today in the 90s, but it had to take a few risks to get there. Thus, not all of those old cartoons are winners. So before we get to number one, here are a few Honorable Mentions. And the number one best 90s Cartoon Network show is... I wanted to mention that I really wanted to include Courage the Cowardly Dog in this, but only five episodes aired in the 90s. In the Nicktoons list, I did include season one of Spongebob since most of it came out in 99, but I just couldn't legitimize throwing five episodes of the Courage series in on here. Just know, I love that weird little show. Now Dexter's Lab is immediately what comes to mind when I think of Cartoon Network original shows from back in the day. Dexter is a genius boy with a hidden lab in his room. His sister, Dee Dee, constantly interrupts his experiments and often causes mishaps to happen. His ultimate enemy, Mandark, <laughs> is a fellow young genius who Dexter also clashes with on a regular basis. Dexter also had great reoccurring additional segments to the show, Dial M for Monkey and The Justice Friends. The talent behind Dexter's Lab basically guaranteed its success. Creator Genny Tartakovsky is pretty prolific in the world of animation. In addition to Dexter, he was behind the creation of Samurai Jack, the 2D Star Wars Clone Wars show, and directed the Hotel Transylvania films. 
Other people who worked on the show included Seth MacFarlane and Butch Hartman, who were also on Johnny Bravo, and Powerpuff Girls creator Craig McCracken. The show itself was fun, funny, and clever. It's also packed with memorable moments and lines that I, and a lot of kids I knew, imitated quite often. I'm that dude from Oz. You are stupid! 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 And don't forget, you are stupid! The original run of Dexter culminated in a TV movie in 1999 called Ego Trip, and I remember thinking how smart I thought it was, even back then. We can't talk about Dexter without mentioning Dial M for Monkey. The Justice Friends was pretty funny as well, but Monkey was almost as memorable as Dexter himself. You have been chosen to receive the most glorious of gifts, the opportunity to face me, the great wrestler in a contest of strength and skill. That episode is amazing. Go find and watch Rasslore. Ooh, yeah! It was pretty close between Dexter and Powerpuff Girls, but Dexter proved to be the more memorable and slightly higher quality show for me. Cartoon Network was a great alternative to Nickelodeon's Nicktoons in the 90s, and I enjoyed going back and forth between the two. These shows are fondly remembered by the kids who watch them. I want to hear what you guys think. What is your favorite 90s Cartoon Network show? What do you want me to cover next on this show? Leave a comment and let me know. Make sure you check out Awesome Comics from yesterday where we take a look at the worst Marvel villains. There are some bad ones. I mean, bad. Follow me on Twitter at Awesome underscore Walter to take part in more polls about what I may cover in the future. Come back next week when we change things up yet again on a brand new episode of Top 5.